Thanks for coming, everyone. I'm Andrew Turley from the Atlas of Business Australia, and I can share with Aaron from Atlas of Business Australia today on biosecurity. Oh, we got a problem. <laughs> Wonderful. <clears throat> um, so we've got a bit of extra time in this session. We've got about an hour and a half. So we're planning to go through four presentations um, straight through. We probably won't stop too much for questions unless one's particularly short, but then we'll get everyone and anyone online will stay online as well at the end of those and have a bit of a panel Q&A and then a bit of extra time for discussion as well. Um, but to kick us off, um, we got William presenting. So please come on up. Thanks. Um, it's a pleasure to be here at Tadwig, and I'm speaking to you and speaking to you in this um, symposium on biosecurity data. Uh, my name's Will. I'm a software developer uh, with FinBIF, the Finnish Biodiversity uh, Information Facility, based at the Finnish Museum of Natural History. Uh, I'm speaking today on behalf of myself and my colleague, Esko. To kick things off, I'd like to provide some context uh, to what I plan to talk about today, connecting the fields of biodiversity informatics, um, which is what we do at FinBIF and biosecurity. Uh, this is a rough flow chart outlining how biodiv biodiversity informatics and biosecurity uh, might be connected in practice. We start with direct observations, um, at which point these observations are submitted and end up in a central repository such as FinBIF. If the observation consists of data that are relevant to biosecurity, then a notification is triggered. And from there, observations can be verified, control actions taken if deemed necessary, and reporting can happen where appropriate. Uh, today, I will focus on the notification step of this process, the interface between biodiversity informatics and biosecurity. I'll briefly outline how we approach this at FinBIF and tell you about some of the things we've learned along the way. Before I go on, um, I'll briefly introduce who we are at FinBIF the, and also the Finnish biose biosecurity agencies. Uh, FinBIF manages the primary repo repository for biodiversity data in Finland. Uh, we are based at the Finnish Museum of Natural History, which is an independent institution of the University of Helsinki. Uh, we, are FinBIF's, uh, we are Finland's GBIF node as well. Um, we have so far collated approximately 50 million occurrence records. They have been sourced from over 500 different data sets. These include government agency data, uh, scientific data sets, digitized museum collections, and citizen science projects such as iNaturalist. And for particular relevance um, to today's topic, an in-house developed invasive species reporting portal that enables the public to directly report observations of invasive species. Um, apologies for the slide there. Uh, Finland has two, bio, uh, two agencies directly responsible for biosecurity. Uh, the Natural Resources Institute Finland, is what it says under there somewhere, um, is the agency responsible for monitoring and coordinating the control of invasive species. They're primarily a research body and they operate under the Ministry of Agriculture and Forestry. Um, a second agency, the Finnish Food Authority, is charged with monitoring and management of plant pests and diseases, uh, including pe pests and diseases of forestry-relevant tree species. They also operate under the same ministry as natural resources. So, at FIMPIF, we operate a biosecurity alert system to connect the raw occurrence data that enters our central data repository um, directly to the relevant people at the Natural Resources Institute and the Finnish Food Authority. The system uses a, a simple low-tech approach based on automated emails. 
And the benefit being that it's simple to implement and maintain, particularly on the side of the biosecurity agencies, there's next to no extra work for them as they simply receive emails from us at already established inboxes that are used to receive, already used to receive your email alerts from the public and other agencies directly. Uh, this simplicity does come with a cost. Um, however, as anyone who's ever sent it or received an email knows it's not completely fail safe. It's often difficult to know why or even if something has gone wrong. Monitoring and reporting and therefore reflexive improvement is also not easy with such a simple system. Um, particularly from our point of view at FinBiff, we typically know very little about what happens once an email alert has been sent. Uh, to dive a little deeper into the details of our system, we send alerts for about 60 invasive taxa and for a list of about 300 plant pests and diseases. Alerts, if any, are sent on a daily basis as a digest of all the observations um, submitted to FIMBIF in the previous 24 hours. Um, alerts are triggered by any observation that occurs in Finland, but, also, but for inv invasive, it's also observations from neighboring countries in Finiscania, in the Baltics and Russia. Um, observations where the event occurred any time in the previous five years triggers an alert. Uh, and we don't do any automated or manual quality checks on these records before we send out an alert. Um, an email alert itself consists of a simple list of occurrences in the form of their taxon names and links to the observations as they appear in our web portal. Um, here the alert receiver can review all the data we have on that record, including photos and time, location, etc. Uh, to ground this somewhat abstract talk so far in a bit of reality, I'll briefly talk about some of, of the taxa that we have or might send out alerts for in the future. This aquatic plant is Nuttall's waterweed. Its native range is North America, but it's now well-established well invasive in Europe. It's um, been moving north, presumably accelerating under climate change. Um, first recorded in Sweden in 1993, then in Norway in 2006, with the first Finnish record occurring only two years ago in a small pond in the southwest of the country. This species has the potential to do significant ecological damage as it um, choke, quickly chokes up water, bo water bodies. Um, since the initial incursion, it has spread to two more nearby areas. It has been subject of multiple automated alerts from our system. In contrast, the Asian longhorn beetle has so far not been the subject of any of our automated alerts. Um, this insect's native range is Northeast Asia and is an invasive pest in North America and Europe due to the trade in wood products and other goods. It's a significant pest that causes high tree mortality and economic losses, but if caught early, eradication is possible. Um, it was first found in Finland in the capital region in 2015. A quarantine area was set up um, and established around the incursion. Control measures were conducted with eradication finally declared only in 2020. So far, no records in FinBiff of this taxa have triggered alerts yet as we've only set up our alert system with the Finnish Food Authority uh, starting this, this year. Our invasive species alert system has been operating for five years though. And since then we have sent out alerts, uh, 70 alerts consisting of 111 records. These have included 11 different taxa um, and have come from 16 distinct different sources, including our naturalist and our own in-house invasive species portal. Um, like I said, plant pests and diseases alerts only began this year, but since then we've sent out 80 alerts consisting of uh, 250 occurrence records. These have included uh, 15 different taxa and come from seven sources. Uh, over time, the trend for invasive species alerts has been more or less linear. The non-linearity you see in this graph is partly due to seasonality. Um, and also to new taxa being added periodically along this timeline. Um, for plant pests and diseases, 
so far the trend in alerts has been what you might expect for its first year of operation. Few alerts sent initially, um, a rapid increase over summer and then leveling off as we head into autumn. So, um, at FIMBA, if we continue to operate and maintain our alert service, we are looking to improve the system in a number of ways. Um, for example, we are currently integrating the alert system with our record annotation system. Uh, previously, alerts were simply based on raw occurrence records with the taxon identifications that trigger an alert only being those associated with the record as it was originally submitted. Um, FIMBIF has an annotation system where domain experts can augment occurrence records with new data, including identifications. So now uh, the system will run where alerts will be triggered when an annotation changes a record's identification to a taxon of interest to one of the agencies, which previously would not have occurred. Um, other possible improvements we may look at include whitelisting taxa um, to improve the rate of false positives, which are particularly prevalent when one of the agencies has selected a higher taxonomic level to trigger an alert. Um, many native uh, taxes in that case will trigger alerts where they might not be actually needed by the agency. And finally, it would be good to be able to improve on the reporting and feedback about the actions taken as an outcome of the alerts. Um, it's hard to say currently what impact the alerts are ultimately having. If we had a better idea about this, it would make it easier to improve the system uh, and it would encourage people making the original observations if they knew there were positive outcomes resulting from their initial efforts. Um, thanks. I'd like to acknowledge my um, host institutions and the Finnish Food Authority and the Natural Resources Institute for helping out with this. So we do have time for probably one question, if anyone's got any. Hi, um, have you thought about integrating any kind of AI alerts or monitoring in terms of you know, computer vision or acoustic monitoring? Is that kind of part of the thinking or the remit of a particular taxa that would lend themselves to that? That might, or is that just over engineering at this stage? I guess the way we sort of envisage, envisage the system is that it just the idea is that it integrates seamlessly with our other all our um, occurrence record generating systems in that happened before it. So we definitely are looking at AI, that's a major work package as part of our some, some of our recent funding at FinBIF. So if it were to, um, help with this in system it, it would be coincidental but, but yeah so yes and no <laughs>